the whole myth about like socialism just being for like lazy people who don't want to work is just some bullshit. I mean, I work three jobs. You know, I spend most of my time at work. And I'm a socialist because I realize I don't want to work less, but I want my work to have meaning. I don't want to be alienated from my labor. And I certainly don't want somebody taking every extra cent that I make the company and putting it in their own pocket. So I was born in San Francisco, lived here for the first little part of my life. I got into politics through punk. So, you know, I wasn't really like, I'm a communist or whatever. I was just like, you know, left-wing politics are like a way, it's just what you do when you're punk. And I was a lot more concerned at that point, like 14, you know, to my teenage years with getting drunk, which led me to do very poorly in school and I think sort of set me on my uh, trajectory. But once I discovered heroin, that was it. There was no, absolutely not coming back from that. And it was a dark, 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 the, by far, the worst period of my life. Once I got, got sober and, and I, I was able to do something besides just sit in AA meetings all day, I realized that like, I need, you know, something to do. To do. I had involvement with socialist groups here, but it, it didn't seem like it was going anywhere. Kobani has been under the onslaught of the Islamic State group since mid-September. There wasn't a single moment when I decided like, I'm gonna go to Syria. My brain is, extremely small and incredibly broken. So I just got obsessed with it. I originally wanted to go as a civilian. I realized that was harder than I thought. Uh, and the only way I could get there was to, by joining the YPG. The YPG um, is People's Protection Units and it is the armed wing of a political party called the PYD, a left wing, they call themselves communalist, a political party in the north of Syria. They're trying to start a socialist society based around democratic and federalist lines. And they were fighting ISIS too, which are uh, generally not known to be great guys. People use this sort of privilege discourse or like stay in your lane discourse about people going out there. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that the YPG have a dedicated office to having Westerners come out there, or not Westerners, anybody come out there. Within the ranks of the Kurdish freedom movement, people from Europe and people from America have fought since the, almost the beginning. And I believe that the Kurdish freedom movement is, is, is waging the same war as the workers in India or the workers in Taiwan and stuff like that. You know, like the class war is global. So the workers of all, all those countries and every country up and down, every continent, have the same exact interests to emancipate themselves from wage slavery. First few months back were difficult, really difficult. Um, when I got back, I was sort of like, all right, I'm gonna take a little break from doing political stuff or anything. I was just like, I'm just gonna sit at home and be depressed for a little while. I was aware that people said San Francisco was progressive, but I never saw it. Like socially, it's very progressive, you know, like very, you know, welcoming to um, different minority groups if they have money. If they don't have money though, they're screwed. I started working at Anchor Brewing Company in, um, I think January of 2018. After I, I, I got a job there, some guys sort of took me aside and were like, listen, you know, we've been talking about this, maybe starting a union here. And that's when things got, um, a little more interesting at work. Anchor Brewing was the first craft beer company in America. It's an industry where, where sales have skyrocketed and wages have dropped during that same period. We don't think that's fair because there wouldn't be no craft beer without craft beer brewers and, and, and bottlers and canners. Especially in a place like where we work, where we actually produce a product, like I can see our power all around us because without us, like if we put our hands in our pockets and walked away, there would be no business. Well, I had some organizing experience before, but not anything like this. You just go and you talk to people and you invite people to meetings and you form an organizing committee. And eventually you want to talk to everybody. You don't want to tell them that they want a union. You want to, you know, you want to help them understand why they might need a union. I work with guys who had not voted before for anything in their lives. And this was the first thing they voted for. And I thought that was, that was very fitting. Uh, the first thing was for their actual interest to advance the interests of workers. Uh, after the vote, a bunch of us went out to a, uh, a a sort of dive bar nearby. Everybody, you know, had anchor and stuff, sort of like in celebration. Um, and I had a Coca-Cola. 
you know, living as like a working person in San Francisco, you don't feel like a human being. You're worth $16 an hour, that's nothing. You know, everyone else in the city is worth $50 an hour or whatever, you know, by writing computer programs. You're at the bottom and you don't even know you're at the bottom, you know, because you're taught that like, you know, all you have to do is work a little harder and then you're, they're actually going to make you the boss. You know, it comes back to solidarity, you know. Solidarity is like the weapon of the world's workers. Solidarity was like the reason I decided like I'm going to go to Syria. And like solidarity is the reason that like I started like getting more involved in this thing at work. If you are a working person, whether you know it or not, like you are a participant in the class struggle. I think it's the duty for everybody who works for a living, who sells their labor power, to, to stand up for themselves and to stand up for the other people in their situation.